Hey right bags, it's Jay today giving you a guide to clothing. I've finally crafted every single piece. In today's guide, I'm gonna be using the most basic resources to craft every single set. Show them off a little bit visually and talk about some of the nuances. It's more of a progression guide about what types of gear you should be maybe crafting or using by the time you get to certain parts of the game. I have got a much more detailed guide incoming. I decided to split into two. With the second one focused on giving you the best builds, the best melee build, the best magic build, the best sharpshooter build. But it became all too dense putting it into this one video, so I did separate it a little bit. So today, yeah, I'm going to show you off at least all of the gear, where to buy every single piece, the benefits, plus points and negatives, and what to expect once you get to the watch and you start buying more. If you find this video useful, leave a like, go and check out the rest of my Nightingale content, and let's go. So the key piece of info, if you use nothing but the basic resources, you get four different distinct gear scores. Gear score 20, gear score 41, gear score 74, and gear score 118. With a few one-off little exceptions. Your simple gear equals gear score of 20. Your NTTC, Trapper and Jaunty, that's going to be around level 41. Explorer and Calcularian, gear score of around 74, and the rest, 118. So I won't go too much into detail about the simple set, but you know that obviously you need to get access to the Antiquarian Site of Power by getting your gear score above level 20. You never want to be upgrading this stuff beyond uncommon, and you definitely want to ditch it the first chance you get, and that will be when you get to the Trapper set. The simple gear doesn't have a lot of the attributes that you'll find on later gear as well, and that's something I have to mention now as well. Some gear items will have things like movement speed. Generally speaking, it's only your boots. Some items like your coats have resistances against elemental damage or status effects. And I'll be going over this probably in my next video talking about the different builds, but you never want to waste certain resources. So if something's got a whole bunch of resistances, don't be trying to make a hat or some gloves with it. They're only good for making a coat. But yeah, look out for that video. It's definitely going to be useful if you're trying to min-max the most and get lots and lots of certain attributes onto your gear. You'll be able to craft the simple stuff at a regular sewing bench, but to get the weathered hat and the simple head wrap, that's got to be a refined bench. With the refined bench, you'll also have access as default the trapper gear. By upgrading your simple gear to uncommon, that should get you over to level 30, comfortable enough to do all the antiquarian and the astrolabe realms. As soon as you unlock the provisional realms and get them refined benches, then you craft the trapper gear. Trapper gear is good for stealth and maybe a bit more stamina, and yeah, it's definitely a huge upgrade compared to the simple stuff. You'll now have a ton more resistances on your coat compared to the simple coat, and it should last a good while until you start exploring some of the Iberian realms, as that's when you're going to get the next set, the NTTC set. There are a couple side items that you can unlock in the Provisional Realms. You can get the Intrepid Shirt and the Explorer Breaches from the Desert Provisional Essence Trader. Now, it's actually worth maybe going to the Desert Provisional and buying the Intrepid Shirt and the Trousers as they are slightly better than the Trapper Gear. So a direct comparison and bearing in mind I've made everything pretty much with the very similar or same resources, Tier 1 items, Crude, Fibre or try to keep everything within the same sets. Maximum health is slightly better than Trapper. It's got a lot better stamina, but its health regen is worse. It's not highly convincing. You might want to just hold off until you get to the NTTC stuff and get the trousers there. As as you'll see in a minute, they've got much better stats in terms of health regen, which I value quite a lot. Where it makes more of a difference is the Intrepid shirt when you compare it to the Trapper shirt. Now I did use a bound bristle for this, so it's slightly better in terms of health regen I do believe, but only by a couple of points. But pretty much all the other stats, it's also beating it as well with max health, the stamina. So I probably would make the extra effort to go and get at least this shirt and then use this and upgrade this one instead of the trapper stuff. There is no complete set for the Intrepid shirt, it's a one-off. The Explorer breeches, you do find a complete Explorer set but it's pretty much higher level, so you won't really maybe wear them long term. Next up, if you head over to the Forest Herbarian Essence Trader, you will come across the NTC bundle of hats, and then at the Swamp Herbarian, you'll find the NTTC bundle. So out of the three hats, absolutely the flat cap is the best. It has better melee and critical than the bowler hat, much better range damage than the derby hat, and the derby hat doesn't even have any critical damage. Remember, you can't add attributes to these. What you're seeing is what it's got, so you can't just suddenly add movement speed to a hat. There's only specific items, and that's what I'm going to talk about in my follow-up video a bit more. 
So when you're adding charms and stuff, that's why you can't apply it to all clothing. It only works on the clothing that's already got that attribute. So short, quick tip, and I'll, again, I'm gonna expand on it. Don't waste stuff if it's not gonna go towards that item. And the best example is resistances against fire, ice, miasma, poison. If any resources like hide or leather have them on it, you can only apply that to coats. All the other items won't take on board them resistances. But yeah, to me, the flat cap is the best out of these. It's got better health than the bowler hat, only slightly less than the derby hat, and it doesn't have any magic though. That's the one thing the bowler hat does have, a two definition score of magic, but that's not going to do much in the early stages. And here's a little detour of showing you the actual hats themselves, mixed in with the NTC stuff. Yeah, I'm going to trip over that a bunch of times, and maybe I could have done better getting this at full daylight rather than dusk. But that was the bowler hat, and now here is the derby hat. So slightly darker, or at least it was showing the green more compared to the more pale sort of beige of the bowler hat. And then I could not get the flat cap to turn around properly and see his face, but you get the idea. It's a flat cap, and it's the best one. And then over to the Swamp Herbarian to get the full NTTC stuff. The coat obviously should be the first thing that you craft, because it, again, it's still going to give a lot more resistances with only slightly less health. The boots and other items are all pretty much got more health on them than the Trapper's gear, and totally get the NTTC pack as it will hold more than the Trapper one. I would say the Intrepid shirt is still pretty decent as well to just use that instead of going for the NTC one or keep on using the Trapper shirt. Some of the Trapper gear is good in terms of the gloves as it's got better range damage and it has got critical damage. So there's just one more set that sits within this same range, all level 41 or 37. It's not a complete set, but nearly there. It is the Jaunty set. You get this from the Forest Hunt realm. Basically comes with a tailcoat jacket, you'll get unadorned gloves, as well as the stirrup boots, and a dashing top hat. Also comes with the classic breeches. Only thing it doesn't have is a shirt, nor a pack. And honestly, it's just bad. Compared to the NTTC stuff, or even the trapper gear, it just doesn't really have any benefits other than the look, if you want to look a bit more dandy. If you're lucky enough to get the Twitch set, you probably learned it's probably OP. In fact, it's relatively much better than any of the starter gear, and it's pretty on par with the Jaunty, somewhere lying between that and the NTTC. But of course, it is now unavailable, so yeah, I'm not going to waste my time going over stats. Otherwise, you'll know as soon as you get to the watch, it does become redundant anyway, and our gear is going to be much better. The only thing maybe the dashing top hat as part of this set has got going for it is slightly better range rating so your damage with bullets will do better damage over distance. Everything else is worse than the flat cap. But then equally it doesn't have as much range damage so yeah that's why I'm kind of coining it as just a bad one. It's also missing out on a bunch of resistances with the coat. It has got slightly better health regen than the trapper breeches and both trousers do have stealth. But compared to the NTCC, the health regen on that is much, much better. The NTCC boots don't have any blocking efficiency, so you won't do as well when blocking with melee weapons. So that's one thing I guess maybe the stirrup boots have over it. But yeah, I would say focus on getting the other stuff upgraded. And then before we move on to the real stuff, the real clothing choices that you might need help with, you can pick up rumpled breeches at the Desert Hunt Trader, and yeah, they're just not worth it either. Conclusion, after you've got your simple gear, make sure you switch over to the Trapper set as soon as possible and get it mostly upgraded to uncommon and maybe a few rare. Or once you get NTCC, swap out. Go ahead and invest a lot more of your better resources into crafting that. Don't bother with the Explorer stuff, don't bother with the Jaunty set or mess around with the other odd pieces that you can get hold of. Bar maybe the Intrepid shirt. The exception to this is Scout Boots. These are something that I couldn't find in the traders. You get given a pair as a reward, and it's usually rare already once you get to the watch. Also remember, you won't be able to craft any of the NTC stuff, the jaunty stuff, or pretty much any of the other stuff, unless you've got augmentations. You can see my base is pretty much kitted out with them. I managed to fill every single bar, and now I've got access to the recipes. So you will need to find things like the crew tea set, the car brack, the plow, simple saddle rack, training dummy, and a basic sawhorse. 
some of these items will unlock a lot of them recipes. In fact, you can't even craft the symbol head wrap until you've got an anvil. The basic saw horse will help you craft a lot of the NTTC stuff, as well as the rumple breeches. Anything with a lock on that you're seeing now is future content that's been left in the game files or in the game. Lots of the same augments do the same job as well, like the construction press also unlocks the NTTC. So make sure you're paying attention to the augmentations about what they'll actually give you and do. It for sure can be a bit misleading with some of these, as you might think all you need to do is get the augmentation and you'll have the un recipe unlocked, but of course you know now that you've got to go and buy them. And like I said, some of this stuff you won't be able to actually craft or make because it's future content. Even gear that you see on certain NPCs in the world, like the whimsical hat, you can come across NPCs wearing that, you still won't be able to craft yourself. So you've made it to the watch, you've received your pair of free scout boots, and you probably would have got the pea coat as well. Striking pea coat is epic gear, so there's no reason to really craft any other jackets for now. So once at the watch and the ascended realms, you can get hold of the calcularian set or the explorer set. These are going to be your level 74 gear. Now there is an argument you can skip both of these and just go straight to the end game stuff because you can buy the rest of the gear at the watch. The Calcularian and the Explorer stuff, you're going to explore the Ascended Realms to go and get them from the Essence Traders. Whereas if you go ahead and grind a few of the vaults as soon as you get into the watch, you will be able to probably go ahead and buy some of the more advanced gear. What it's meant to boil down to is that the Explorer stuff is meant to be more ranged. Calcularian stuff is meant to be a bit more balanced and give you more health. Hermetic stuff and the Druidic, the other two sets you can buy from the watch, the Hermetic stuff is more about magic and the Druid is definitely more about melee. There is one more bundle set called the Passe bundle, but it is kind of a mix between the two, although it does have a higher gear score than anything else in the game. Explorer's jacket has got more resistance than the Calcularian, and as you can see from the hat you get more range damage with the Explorer stuff versus Calcularian. But you do get slightly more melee damage with the Calcularian. So it mostly falls into that category, although look out for the Explorer's gloves, which don't actually have range damage where the Calcularian gloves do. So it's a bit of an oversight, but the rest of the gear is more focused on ranged. You might definitely want to mix and match to suit your build. I will be talking about this more in the second video I'm doing. And then talking about the backpacks, this is the last one you can get. The Explorer's backpack is slightly better stealth rating. Calcularian's got slightly better health. Calcularian you pick up from the Ascended Antiquarian Forest Trader. Should be able to pick it up from the Ascended Astrolabe Forest Trader as well. There's a glitch at the moment, I think, where it shows one of them's a hat bundle, but they should unlock both sets. And just to show what the P coat actually looks like, I'm using it with some Explorer gear here. So relatively cheap then, just buy everything else except the coat since you've just been given an epic version. Go ahead and upgrade it, or simply try and quickly make your way through the next set of Ascended Realms, which is easy to do to get hold of the Explorer set. The recipe for this can be bought in the Ascended Hunt Forest. So you are going to have to go through a few realms, but it's really easy. You only have to go and just get to the Essence Trader to unlock the next realm. So again, just like the progression in the early part of the game, Antiquarian, find the Essence Trader, you get access to Astrolabe. Astrolabe, Essence Trader, get access to Provisioner, then Herbarium, then Gloom, then Hunt. So it does seem like a long way away, but you could power through it if you really wanted to mess around more with the Explorer stuff. Just need to make sure you've got enough lustrous ink and some of the other resources to craft cards. Here's what the Explorer set looks like with the Explorer's coat. It's definitely worth it for me making the boots. That 5% built-in movement speed is really good and it's the highest out of any of the other gear. So if you make it out of materials that give even more, you can really give yourself a quick boost just to move around the realms quicker. A bit weirdly, you do have to go and get the Explorer's hat separate at the Ascended Desert Hunt Realms. Either way, this gear is all around level 74, and the next set of gear is obviously where it goes a bit higher. So at the watch, you can pick up the Druidic sets and the Hermetic sets, as well as a few other little items like the Passe bundle. Majority of this gear is going to be 118 plus. At the moment, it's a bit confusing because some of the bundles contain some items, and some items can be sold separate. So if you buy the Druidic bundle underneath shirts and tops, you get the Druidic jacket. You also get the casual shirt, and this is the only way that you get a top hat or a hat as part of a bundle. You can then buy some of these individual items because the next Druidic bundle is missing a few. You get the coat and you get the more formal shirt, 
but it doesn't include gloves nor a hat, hence why the other items are sold separate to complete the set. Kind of annoying, I wish they would just make this more simplified. Differences between them are pretty much that you get a bit more stamina with the casual sets and a little bit more health with the formal. So yes, they're all going to be good for maybe melee, but it's definitely a little bit of a difference between the two sets. And it's pretty similar with Hermetic stuff, which is focused on magic. The casual clothing will have more health and stamina, but slightly less magic. So for the best magic build, you want to go for the formal stuff. So here's some of the Druidic clothing, wearing the coat and also wearing the additional hat that you can buy, the Druidic bonnet. And this is the Druidic bundle with the Druidic top hat, as well as the jacket instead of the coat. And here's some of the Hermetic stuff, obviously you've got the veil, which is kind of odd as it covers most of your face. This is the base stuff that you get as part of the bundle. And then I'm wearing the matronly gown, which you get as part of the Passe bundle, mixed in with the embellished head wrap. Both the Druidic hat as well as the embellished head wrap both have magic of a six, compared to only level three for the actual elegant bonnet. Remember, you get the embellished head wrap separate from one of the realms. The elegant bonnet should be part of the per se bundle. The matronly gown has pretty similar stats to the rest of the jackets from the Hermetics or Druidic, although it's lacking a little bit in rain, heat, cold, blight and injury with only 10% compared to the Druidic jacket with 15%, although it has got better ice, fire, poison, miasma resistance at 20% compared to the 15% you get with the Druidic coat. The Hermetics capelet though is where it's really at. Much better resistance against heat, cold, blight and rain. 25% is the biggest out of all of them, with its ice, fire, poison and miasma at 15%. So less than the matronly gown and the Druidic jacket, but the same as the Druidic coat. It does have noticeably though lower health compared to the other coats and jackets. The Druidic top hat has got a lot better range rating than the embellished head wrap. So it's got better health, and very similar melee damage ranged and critical. Laborious hat's probably got one of the better range damage at 10%, double any of the other hats, but it's pretty similar in all other aspects. And the Druidic bonnet is kind of weak source when it's measured up against the Druidic top hat, but it has got a slightly higher score of 129 with gear, but the one to really look out for is the Elegant Bonnet. You find the embellished head wrap at the Ascended Swamp Astrolabe. The Laboratorist hat you can find at the Ascended Swamp Hunt. So a bit more detail there on some of them individual pieces. I will be doing a full blown guide. Like I said, that's incoming very soon. I'm going to be giving you the best builds. So I'll directly tell you these are the items you need to get the best sharpshooter, the best melee, the best magic. Well, hopefully this little preview and kind of guide to progression has helped. Bottom line, at the end there, it is up to you. you know, whatever playstyle you're preferring, that's the clothing you should really aim for. I don't think necessarily there is necessarily a better one. You do use melee weapons a hell of a lot though, and I would say melee is definitely a good focus. Especially if you haven't necessarily got all the right resources to craft the best magic gear. Or you haven't got maybe certain stuff to make the best guns. It took me days to do this, not only just unlocking it, but trying to work out the differences and find out the comparisons. So like I said, hopefully you can appreciate with a like and look out for the future video so that you can really start to make the build that you really want. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.